Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV, powered by Stage Front VIP with the magic man, Antonio Tarver. Antonio, what's up, dog? How you what's doing? What's up, my guy? What's happening? We just had Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis fight last night, man. Uh, Tank Davis getting the best of Ryan with a body shot, seventh round knockout, man. He took the full 10 count. What'd you think about the way the bout ended? The bout ended uh, like I thought it would end, like one shot. I thought it would be a head shot, though. Uh, he did drop him in the second. Uh, you know, Ryan overcommitted. And it was, it was really a high-class chess match, man. Both of them had an enormous amount of respect for each other early, which they should have. Um, but what I would have wanted to see is, is Ryan step up with that jab, maybe two, three. He never, never doubled up on the jab. So he was always outside of his working area where he could, you know, bring something back. He tried to catch him with the left hook a couple of times. Javante saw that. He had his radar on that. I don't think he, he maybe got caught once or twice. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing severe. But it was a technical fight, man, that, uh, you know, Javante Davis' skill, I think his, like I said, he was better, more prepared for the moment. And you can see that uh, after uh, Ryan was ineffective the first two or three rounds, uh, he really had nothing, nowhere else to go but get overly aggressive. And when he did that, that gave uh, Javante an opportunity to land a shot when he was exhaling, throwing a right hand. And uh, when he exhaled and throwing the right hand, uh, that shot debilitated, man. Uh, he got caught with a shot he didn't see, didn't expect. And those are the ones that get you out of there. And like you said, didn't see it, didn't expect it. The crowd didn't see it, didn't expect it. I was ringside, didn't see it, didn't expect it at all. He just kind of, it, it looked like something happened and everybody was kind of like, what the hell, what happened, what happened? Then Ryan dropped down and you could see where Obviously, on his face, he was going through a lot, a lot of, pain. of pain. What were you thinking when you saw his face? The nose is bleeding. It was kind of cinematic, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked like the life was taken out of him, bro. You know, he saw his dream leave him immediately. He just couldn't get back. I think he lost his breath. He tried to suck it up. But, it, it, you know, unless you've been there, you don't know what that feels like, man. It's just like, hey, that body shot, man, it's hard to recover from that. You know, and it wasn't until I was in the amateurs where I really experience the effect of body shots. So, hey, a lot of guys don't invest downstairs. And I don't think Tank was doing a lot of investing downstairs until that shot, you know, showed itself. You know, Garcia, very few body shots. And I was surprised that this fight didn't have more ebb and flow. I expected more combinations, more exchanges, more, you know. So that didn't happen because these guys had so much respect for each other. No one wanted to be the first one to make that crucial mistake. Where do you think the guys go from here? Uh, but before we talk about where they go from here, uh, we talk about where they've been. Ryan Garcia in the post fight last night let us know, man, I felt bad. I felt drained. I uh, didn't feel good. What do you think about the rehydration clause? Was it overkill from Tank Davis's group? It could have been. I mean, uh, what, 10 hours before the fight, you have a chance to first rehydrate after the weigh-in. That's a lot of mental pressure, bro. I mean, the man make weight, let's fight, you know? And, you know, I don't want to take anything away from Tank Davis' win. But, bro, you know, uh, stand on it. I mean, you need to do that, man. You got too much talent. You're too good for that. If the man make weight, fight. You feel me? That's what we signed a contract for. So when you go in there and try to, you know, get uh, an advantage or leverage or some, any type of way, man, it's just uncalled for. He's better. Ta he's more of a better talent than that. He's a better fighter than that. And, you know, so now uh, Ryan can say that he was depleted. He has an excuse or a, a reason to say, hey, let's run it back. So Javante Davis and his team did that. You know, he could have took care of this business the first go round, and it wouldn't be nothing said. Moving on to the next. And I think he does that anyway because uh, Ryan just didn't seem to have any answers. When we start talking about moving on to the next, um, Pitbull Cruz was in the crowd. Pitbull Cruz was there pretty much the whole week walking around, really kind of taking a part of the life of the promotion for himself, mobbed by fans. I watched Pitbull Cruz try to walk two blocks. It took two hours, almost two and a half hours, just to get from where we where we did the weigh-in back to the MGM Grand. He could not walk on the street at all, man. Uh, how close do you think Pitbull is to getting a tank rematch with the way he's performed here lately? Well, you know, it's big fight weekend. I'm pretty sure any recognizable face and it has uh, any type of uh, 
you know, success in the game, if they're a beloved fighter, they're going to get that respect fight weekend in Vegas. That's, that's all the time. But, yeah, Pitbull, I think that fight with him and uh, Garcia would have been a real indicator of what, you know, Garcia would have had to look forward to with a tank fight. Because of the aggression of Pitbull, I think if Garcia would have got past him, he probably would have been a favorite in the fight this past weekend. You know, I think he made a mistake not fighting that kid because I think that would have elevated his performance. It would have elevated his experience. He would have came into this fight on a real high after coming off a great win over a guy like Pitbull and just like Javante Davis was coming off a big win. So I think that, I think when he looks back at it, their team going to probably regret they didn't get that, that one off before going into the Javante Davis fight because he just didn't have enough reps to prepare himself for that type of talent. Ryan went out and kind of said that Pitbull declined the fight, that his team didn't want to fight the fight. After watching the performance last night, how do you think Pitbull fares against the Ryan Garcia from last night that was stopped? Um, different, you know, different guys, different styles make different fights. I mean, he's a lot more aggressive than Javante David. Javante David is a technical, calculating, you know, uh, monster in there, man. It only, it only takes one opening for him to get you out of there. Now, Pitbull, is, with his aggression, that can be a, it could be an interesting fight, much more exciting fight for a guy like Ryan Garcia because he's going to have to let his hands go to keep Pitbull off of him. So, I mean, I think we want to see that fight, and maybe that could be an eliminator to another title fight or something like that. But if Ryan is, is serious about one day becoming the guy in the lightweight division, he's going to have to get back on that horse and fight one of them killers, man. Ryan says he's, he's campaigning at 140. Uh, champions like Regis Progre oh. sitting there right now. Love the Rougarou, Regis. One of my uh, favorite fighters. One of the best fighters in the world. Uh, when you think of the trajectory of Ryan Garcia at 140, uh, what do you think he does uh, at, the, at the 140 limit? He brings some heat to the, to the game. 140, that, that division is heating up right there. The lightweight's moving up. Um, yeah, I like Ryan in that 140. He might feel a little better, you know what I mean, uh, to, to have to go through what he went through. Um, Cool, but you know, get comfortable, man. I mean, um, some fighters were saying, man, you never sacrifice that. You, f you sacrifice walking in second, walking in first, but don't sacrifice putting your body through that just to make a fight. You know what I'm saying? I think in hindsight, just do it fair, man. Straight up and down, you know? Is this something that you think Ryan will learn from never again? Of course he'll read? learn. What of about course. the annals of boxing? For all the young fighters out there, uh, this won't be the last rehydration clause. What's your official stance on rehydration clauses? I think they need to go back and, and review the reason why they even started doing it. You feel me? It, it, it was to give uh, uh, the A fighter, the A side, uh, somewhat of an advantage. Knock it off, the IBF and all this, bro. A day before wait, the day before the fight is customary, bro. It's been like that forever. Stop making these guys rehydrate and and weigh in on the fight day. That's that's ridiculous. Just because a guy gains a few more pounds, don't mean he's going to be more effective. Get your mind out of that, bro. We see, we we just saw a big guy Fundora get dropped and knocked out. If you can beat the man, you can beat the man, period. I ain't never known. Uh, the amateurs don't do it. I mean, nah, we got to remove that from the game, man, because it could get somebody hurt. Seriously can't. They don't know nothing about that rehydration thing. It could get somebody seriously hurt.